It's about time you hear this story. For the past three Thank years, you. this build has been hiding in almost yeah, every this video. Thing I'm working on. It's had its ups and downs, and there was a point where I thought I'd never finish it. But something inside would not let me give up, and I suppose everything that I've learned has gotten me to this very moment. They call me Dan the Fan. I like breaking things, and today we're going to be talking about roofs. Okay, so my wizard's tower actually uses a variety of different roof techniques, but for the first one, we're going to talk about one of the simplest things you can do to make a nice looking roof. Like most roofs, this one uses 1x2 tiles, and by only connecting half of each tile, it creates this really nice texture that looks like roof shingles. Long term viewers of this channel might recognize this technique. A flex tube goes throughout this roof, connecting all these different layers, and so we can get a nice curve with our roof. For the cone of the tower, things get a little more complex. If you've ever seen people use the net technique for terrain before, you know it also applies to roofs. In order to get my round shape, I placed it on this old Star Wars planet base, and it actually worked out pretty well. If you know anything about geometry, you know that you can make a cone with lots of smaller triangles, and so wedge plates work pretty great if you're trying to make smaller cones. Finish the whole thing off with more flex tube and these tiles to make the brim, and there you go, that's the wizard's tower. Sure, y'all would love to hear me talk about these weird red rocks and everything that goes into it, but this video is about roofs, so we're going to stay on topic. Like the previous ones, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll hopefully recognize this technique. It's crazy how many times snow and roofs cross over in the technique realm, but we're using these 1x1 one one clips here, and if you use them to connect two 1x2 tiles, you can make this like fabric, and with that you can get whatever curve or shape you need. I also used it for the ground down below. And so it's a very versatile technique. I love it a lot. I also had a lot of fun with this roof, just really emphasizing the colors. If you look at the original reference image for this build, you can see that the sun is hitting it really hard. And so using a gradient with different Lego colors, I was able to kind of get this effect. Sure, it's not perfect, but I find it does make the roof a lot more interesting. Dude, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I try to make a video not about trees, and then something like this just appears. Like, where did this, what? Where did this come from? What even is? I really don't think anybody here is going to get where this build comes from, but I guess I'll just show you the roof techniques anyways. I did say I'd probably make a roof with these shield parts in my last video, so I came through. I've come to realize that when building roofs, it's really just clips and flex tube. Sometimes your clips will be joint arms and sometimes your flex tube will be like a wagon wheel or something. Cones are one of the hardest things to build in Lego, but if you stick to your trusted clips and flex tube, you're going to be fine. Things get really exciting though when we look at these other two roofs. But let's move to the next build and I can tell you all about it. Yeah, so I've been thinking about nothing but 1x1 tiles for like the past 6 months. This build is starting to give me like really big that one fish book vibes. But let me show you how this technique works. Now there's so much that went into the coming up with this design, but I'll try to keep it short. I saw this technique a while back by Simon, and this man goes crazy with these tiles, and I always wanted to achieve that look, but the idea of placing all these tiles without any connections just, oh, it just freaked me out, which is crazy because most of the stuff I build is not connected, but I needed a better design. So I worked with it for, must have been like weeks when I came up with this. I'm sure you guys can tell by now how this is built, but it's not enough to be able to overlap these tiles with just using clips. They're too small for that to work. So you need to pull something quite illegal in order to get them close together. By placing a tile on top of a clip, you can get this perfect lineup. And then the tiles that are placed in the clips, you have them offset. So each layer offsets from each other. Despite what you think, this is actually really strong and nothing will ever fall out if it's built correctly. 
Speaking of built correctly, the cone here is a disaster. Sure, it does its job, but there's so many messy areas and I wish it would look better. But bro, this is a technical technique by itself. Trying to get it to go into a cone shape is just impossible. So this is what I came up with. I'm not going to delve too far into it, but you get the idea. It's lots of clips and lots of round shapes. Okay, so that's the whole video. Um, don't leave just yet. I thought I'd give you all a quick room tour. So this is my space. Um, so we have the Lego over there, and then, yeah, this is no longer my space. That's because I'll be living in Peru for the next two years, and I'll be completely off of social media. So uh, I thought I'd just give y'all a last, how everybody do? And I'll see you in two years. <laughs>